Hey guys, Hiram here. Hey, we got a, a 2005 Volkswagen Beetle with a 09G transmission. And uh, we're going to do a uh, diagnostics and repair of uh, this vehicle. Uh, it's experiencing a lot of issues and uh, it's actually being worked on uh, from a shop. And uh, now, we, now we got it here. And let's have fun with it. All right, well, let's go pick up our scan tool, go to the car, and start our diagnostics. Okay, so we're going to do a full system scan here, and uh, we're going to select uh, Volkswagen. It's going to be an auto scan. A full system scan. It, it, it'll take a little bit, it'll take a while. It's going to take a little bit, it's going to take a while. Uh, we're barely communicating, selecting Volkswagen. Systems. systems. We can do a quick scan. So We're going to do a quick system scan, scan all system scan, scan control unit. Uh, We're going to We're going to select number 3, all system scan. Go to select uh, all system scan. All system scan from number 3, press yes to continue. And this will take a uh, take a little bit. Take this is going to take a little bit. It's going to take a while. It's going to do an auto scan. It's going to ping all the modules and see which module responds and the modules that respond are going to shoot back a trouble code it's going to actually uh, tell you how many trouble codes are on each module okay so what we see here is that the auto scan has already been done and what we see here is uh, one code on one module which is the radio we're not going to worry about that. Uh, we're going to exit from this here. Press escape the auto scan. Press yes. We're going to go to control unit. Number two drivetrain. Number two automatic transmission. And I know that there were snow codes on the auto scan for the transmission, but let's go ahead and check it out anyways. I'm going to go ahead and start the vehicle once we uh, establish communication here. Once we establish communication with the vehicle, uh, we're going to go ahead and start the vehicle, see what it sounds like. System data initializing. Okay, initializing so communication. communication. Let's go ahead and select number one, read okay, codes. We're going to come directly. We, we know that there are no codes because we did an auto scan. So, but okay, let's go ahead and press uh, number one, read codes. Okay, and for our surprise, we have a 01045 Tiptronic uh, switch, static short circuit to another valve, another valve. Uh, 00453 uh, function, uh, limitation due to over temperature static uh, value uh, of resistance to grade, which is a temperature sensor code, and the way that this transmission was acting up, it was and, uh, probably getting real hot, overheating. And on the first code, on the top code, I'm going to give you a shot of the Tiptronic switch, which is the uh, shifter con uh, assembly. Uh, that is the shifter control module. It's in there. I'll give you a shot of that. These are the two codes that we find on the transmission control module. Okay. okay uh, let me give you a shot of that, uh, Let's go ahead and see that Tiptronic switch. Okay, so here we are inside the vehicle, and as you see here, uh, inside the uh, the shifter, there's nothing there. It's just a, a void here. So uh, more than likely, I'm gonna have to take that apart and just look in there. And as you see here, it's probably missing the. Uh, the Tiptronic portion of it which is a uh, I think I can see a piece right here it's a circuit board it's a circuit board underneath the shifter here and that's actually the Tiptronic switch and uh, I mean you uh, you can actually shift it like a manual transmission you know if the Tiptronic switch was actually there so we, we have a code for that and we have a code for a temperature sensor and I'm gonna go ahead and start the vehicle up and yeah it has some uh, engine problems as well we're not gonna we're not gonna go worry about that uh, let's see here on our scan tool uh, I'm gonna get this thing out of the way now what this thing is doing it's uh, you put it in gear 
and it actually engages and it disengages. So I want to put it in reverse. We see here uh, the uh, Prendel indicator, and uh, it is showing. So our uh, neutral safety switch or transmission rain sensor is actually functioning. As you see, I have it in reverse. We are engaged in reverse. I'm going to go ahead and put it in neutral and it shows neutral position and I felt the car went to neutral uh, but let's go ahead and put it in drive and you'll see what I'm talking about you're probably not going to feel it but it engages into drive and then it cuts loose right there it cut loose it engage again and the vehicle rolls back I'm gonna I'm gonna incline here uh, but we were gonna, what we're gonna do uh, we're gonna take the valve body off I'm gonna go through it I'll probably go around the block and see uh, how the transmission is shifting. It was supposed to uh, binding in the one, two, or the two, three shift. And the shop that worked on this uh, vehicle, uh, vehicle history, I mean, they had it for six months. They can't fix it. Uh, and he just decided for me to uh, give him a hand on this. He put a transgo shift kit and he said he got worse with the transgo shift kit. He said that uh, after he installed that, he's uh, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. It could be that the wiring harness is misrouted, that uh, we got two solenoids swapped. You know, the connectors, that's very common. It has six solenoids. It has two wiring harness going into it. And it's very easy to, uh, you know, misconnect the solenoids. I'm going to take it down the block and see which gear is actually the one that's binding up. If we're missing gears, it's a six speed. Uh, automatic uh, transmission uh, 09G Volkswagen this is actually a Beetle I want to go ahead and take it around the block and uh, see uh, what's what's our uh, performance on our upshifts well guys this thing is not drivable I didn't even make it a hundred feet shifted from first to second and on third it just bound up Put it in neutral, it was still bound up. Uh, had to turn the vehicle off, put it in reverse, back up, and uh, creep it here, you know, in first gear. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the pan off and uh, check the connections. If all that is, uh, checks out good, then I'm gonna have to take the valve body off. Hopefully, this transmission is not burnt. If it is, I'll give it back to him, have him pull it out, and uh, bring me the transmission to check it out. Okay, so here's the valve body. I already took it off the car and uh, one of the speed sensors uh, you can see the connector it, it was barely attached to it I'm gonna have to repair this uh, but here's the valve body and I don't know if you're looking at what I'm looking at right now but this spacer plate here takes a molded gasket and as you see here, it was being, I mean, the gasket was scraped off. See that? You have, we have a bare spa, uh, spacer plate here. And we have an accumulator that goes here. And, uh, I mean, that accumulator really needs to be uh, sealed up. Uh, and, uh, I mean, if the valve body is a little bit loose, uh, all the accumulation fluid, I mean, is going to escape. I don't know yet what I am going to find here. The connections were good. The problem that I see sometimes with the connectors, you have six uh, solenoids and uh, one wiring harness comes out from here, another one from here, and one goes through the, through the top like this. One has three wires for these three uh, solenoids and the other one has a connection for one wire these two connections can be reversed uh, these two only fit one way so uh, I mean I've, I've seen these two be reversed and causing a bind up issue uh, in this case everything was connected properly uh, the speed sensor that was it was real stretched the wire was stretched and uh, here's where the speed sensor goes the temperature sensor goes here in this hole the temperature sensor looked fine uh with that bind up more than likely it was driven like that the transmission got hot and uh, they kept uh, driving it like that uh another thing that i need to show you is 
I don't know if uh, the camera is picking this up, but it has ground metal in the transmission. I can see a little bit of friction, brown friction material, and usually uh, this is from the uh, torque converter. Sometimes that could be considered normal if, uh, if the transmission is being driven and nothing has been done to it. If you see this amount of metal, you can consider that normal. But since this transmission has been worked on recently, in, and the transmission never did work, uh, I mean, you have to assume that everything is uh, squeaky clean inside, and you're not supposed to see this. I mean, you're not supposed to find this in there after uh, overhaul. I mean, maybe in a couple thousand miles, you will see some uh, debris that was probably stuck in the cooler. Uh, the back of the caps, I can see this one here. It was not, I don't know how they put them in, but I can see these two are, you know, kind of like they banged on it on installation. These other four, they look fine. Uh, this is the for the uh, torque converter clutch. This is uh, the line pressure control solenoid. These two, they don't look that good. And these four solenoids, they control. Uh, you know a, a clutch pack you know the apply pressures for the clutch packs we have uh, two on off uh, solenoids here okay well uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start disassembling this uh, carefully and uh, I'm not gonna show you the step-by-step -step disassembly but I'm gonna disassemble a portion of it okay so I got this uh, two portions of the valve body here uh, took them away I mean I'm, I've already took him from the valve body takes an accumulator check here it was there uh, here we see it takes two accumulators it takes three actually a pressure relief valve and two accumulators they were there uh, one check ball goes here which is there and this right here comes in the shift kit uh, and as you see here this is a piece of allen piece of allen wrench so he probably uh, lost the clip here which is no big deal I mean as long as you hold it there I mean you can use uh, allen piece of allen wrench there it's no big deal the valve is free I'm gonna I'm gonna take this plug out and just inspect it but here uh, here we see this other portion of the valve body and it has two accumulators one accumulator here with its spring and uh, a pressure relief how does the valve looks they're not hung up they're, they're in good shape let's see the one in the inside also okay I can feel a little bit of drag so we're gonna have to clean this up real good and the drag is from uh, the metal that's uh, you know uh, on the bottom of the pan wherever that metal is coming from in case I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over and uh, remove this uh, 10 millimeter bolt they feel a little tight another thing I need to show you here is the damage on the uh, lockup solenoid or the SL T solenoid, SLS, uh, SLU solenoid. I guess they couldn't get it out and uh, they just beat it out. More than likely, we're going to have an issue with these two solenoids. That's the line pressure control solenoid and lockup solenoid being like this. You know, that's caved in. We're going to have an issue there. Uh, he had, uh, I don't know if you remember, put it in drive, it would engage and then cut loose and then engage and cut loose. Same thing when you would take well, you would take off when I took off actually took off in first gear uh, put it in drive it engaged neutralized give it a little gas and then it engaged took off shifted to second and once he wanted to shift it to third he just bound up and the car stopped I mean the car literally stopped and put it in neutral and he wouldn't roll so I had to turn the vehicle off so there's something going on here in the valve body the fluid don't don't smell burnt it doesn't look burnt. So it is a control issue with the transmission. Valve body control issue.
I know I said I was gonna pause it and continue, but let's just go ahead and uh, see what we're gonna be able to find. And if I need more information, I'll get it. Oh, look at this. I got, <laughs> I got brow body gasket, molded gasket on this side, but not on the other side. That's interesting. Okay, I got one, two, this accumulator right here was stuck. I don't need, did you see that? I mean, it was stuck flush. I can, I can feel the metal. I don't know if you heard the scratching, probably not. I mean, you can, you can feel the, the metal actually. So we've got a white spring there. Got another one over here. With a little bit, a little bitty uh, spring and accumulator check. I'm gonna go ahead and put this to the side right now. Now let's look at this spacer plate here. Let's lift it up carefully, and I should have a few accumulator checks here. I see three. I am not sure, I think, I believe there should be four. Okay, we have accumulator here, check ball, one, two, and three. One, two, and three. It looks about right, check ball. Uh, filter's missing, just a filter that goes here. There's a little screen, little barrel looking screen that goes there I don't know why they did this right here I mean you see this he has gasket here but on the installation they it looks like they went with uh, with the knife and carved it all the way around see this is the way it should look looks like they went all the way around and uh, scraped the gasket off for some reason they probably had like a cut or some something. If this transmission was rebuilt, this gaskets come in the kit. Uh, yeah, it is a lot of work to get, you know, to scrape it off. But if it looks good, I mean, you you can reuse it. There's no problem with that. But this is not acceptable, not to me at least. Okay, I'm gonna literally, uh, like the saying says, go through this with a magnifying glass and uh, find out where the problem is. If I don't see anything wrong with it, then uh, I know for sure that we have uh, solenoid issues. All right guys, well, you may be asking, so what's going on? What's going on with this unit? I have here another valve body and uh, I have here the original four uh, linear solenoids. And this is a newer type valve body that I have from a 2012 uh, Jetta. And uh, the solenoids are a little different, they're smaller, uh, and they behave differently. Uh, I just took them off just to uh, show you. So uh, the question is, okay, so what's, what's going on with the unit? Uh, why does it bind up in uh, going into third gear? Well, I mean, I got the manual here, and actually, you know, I've been, I, I write it down Usually on, on all the uh, shift kits that I do, I, I mean, I keep them and sometimes I write notes on them. And uh, let me just uh, share you some notes that I have here on this page is here. I'm going to get here closer to you. Okay, so uh, the reason I have these two sc uh, scratched off like this, I got them backwards, is because I, I do have the uh, factory manual as well. And uh, here the N92 is supposed to control the K3 clutch and the N90 is supposed to control the K1 clutch, right? That's on the factory manual. But on my uh, ATSG manual and some other information that I got, they got them reversed. Uh, anyway, that's not the issue. The issue is not on the, on the valve body itself. The issue is going to be inside the transmission. And let me let me just show you why you know I have this written down here supposed to uh, you know on the on the chart you know the way they uh, they shift so in first gear you got the k1 clutch apply and it uses the k1 uh, solenoid you know to modulate the pressure for that solenoid 
and on the ATSG manual, let's say I'm going to use the ATSG, which are the ones that are crossed. It uses, according to that manual, it uses the N92, which is in this position, uh, in first gear. So we took off in first gear, first, first gear was fine. Second gear was a little bit, uh, it was okay, you know, but it felt kind of funky, you know, uh, once it was in second gear. In second gear, it stays, the K1 stays, uh, stayed, uh, stays applied, but it applies the B1 uh, clutch or the one uh, or the brake one, you know, the B1 clutch. After uh, B1 clutch and K1 clutch are applied, the K1 clutch stays applied all the way to fourth gear. So that never releases. Uh, but on the release of B1 clutch, in order for third gear to take place, you have to release B1 clutch and apply the K3 clutch. So we have the B1 clutch here, and according to ATSG and the other information, uh, you got the K3 down here. So we got we are all the way up to third gear, but the problem is, is that coming out of second, going into third gear, the vehicle stops. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna go to the transmission. I'm gonna show you uh, the valve body is on my bench, so uh, we can look. We can actually see the B1 clutch. And what we're gonna do? We're gonna check uh, the clearance. I already got a I got a feeler gauge here, and I got it set at twenty thousandths of an inch. Now, uh, according to uh, uh, service information, it's ten thousandths per friction. So uh, if we go count the frictions, if it's four frictions, it's forty thousandths. If it's five frictions, it's fifty thousandths. I know that the more frictions that you count, I mean. The clearance is going to be greater, and uh, 60 thousandths on a clutch pack, I mean, it might seem too much, but if we look at the B2 clutch pack, uh, it looks a little loose. We're not going to measure that, but I'm just going to show it to you. But uh, our concern here, because of the bind up, uh, I already looked in the valve body, I did not find, I mean, yeah, it's a little dirty. Uh, the spacer plate is missing uh, pieces from. Uh, from the gasket where they uh i mean look at that what they did to it it's supposed to be a gasket all the way through i mean to me that's that's uh that's not acceptable but anyways the problem part of the problem is there because uh the accumulator that goes here on the corner that's actually our uh, b1 accumulator so uh we have a uh, pressure loss on the b1 accumulator because of that gasket but we also have a problem on the car itself, on the vehicle itself. So that transmission has to has to come out. Uh, you know, they're, they're going to have to take it. They're going to. I'm not going to pull the transmission out for them. You know, they're going to have to pull it out, and then I'll get it on the bench. And uh, hopefully, that I mean, uh, we'll continue. You know, filming this thing. But for now, I'm going to take you to the car, and uh, we're going to look underneath. You know, in, uh, inside the transmission, not inside, but you know where the valve body goes mounted on there and we're gonna we're gonna look at the B1 clutch pack the way it is, it is assembled in the front you know you have the B1 and then you have the you have the K1 and the K3 clutch pack and the B1 they're all clustered together and the way it is assembled uh, the K3 and the K1 uh, they're all they are assembled and they have to be splined on the same planetary gear uh, on the carrier itself and then you have the B2's going on the outside it's kind of com it's got a little bit complex you know the way it is clustered all together there and it's a very small transmission and I mean you actually uh, get six six gears off of it plus reverse that would be seven uh, anyways uh, let's go to the car and uh, so I can show you what's going on in there. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Here we have the B2 clutch pack, and I don't know if you can tell, but I am moving it, and actually I can get my filler gauge, and I have a lot of play there. I have a 20 thousandths filler gauge. I think I can fit maybe uh, 60 thousandths in here. Let's go ahead and clutch the uh, uh, count the clutch packs. 
one, two, three, four, five. We got six. We got six, and then we have the pressure plate, and we have the piston here in the bottom, and we have the F1 uh, sprag here, and inside here we have the uh, K2 frictions, where there's a K2 drum in there. But this is our concern here. This is uh, this is the uh, B1 clutch pack, and as you see here, I mean it's mechanically applied. I cannot get this filler gauge in there. I mean, if I if I force it in there, I'm gonna get some clutch material off of that. And uh, I believe that this is misassembled. One of the uh, the pressure plate actually has a step, and as the first one that you install here on the housing and it goes on this side and then you start assembling you know uh, after that one that has to step then friction steel friction steel friction steel until you get to the to the top portion of it then your uh, wavy plate and then your uh, return spring there or your apply spring apply and return you know because the piston is actually on the on the pump itself so here we have, I mean, B1 frictions, I mean, you cannot get a filler gauge in this thing. I mean, if you try to move it by hand like that, it's mechanically applied. So uh, that's why first gear is good. Second gear uh, is good because you need the, the B1 to be applied. But once you want it to release for, to apply for third gear, I mean, you cannot, you can't apply, I mean, you, you cannot accomplish third gear because, uh, these are mechanically applied so in other words this uh, 09G transmission has to come out this is the uh, accumulator bore uh, where the B1 uh, accumulator goes into it's actually on the cage the spring goes first then the accumulator itself and uh, so there we have it let's go back to the bench alright guys well uh, knowing this and uh, you know sometimes you uh, may need to save uh, you know the instructions on the shift case I probably have like 10 of these you know laying around uh, and uh, you know the nose you know, always write your nose you know uh, search for your uh, information if you don't have the service manual I mean you can go online you can probably find it anywhere uh, anyways uh, here's the valve body I'm gonna put this thing back together I'm gonna go ahead and give them a call and uh, you know uh, have them take the vehicle and you know pull the transmission out and hopefully that uh, we get the transmission in here uh, tear down and uh, probably just correct the issue you know supposedly they did a rebuild uh, we don't know for sure until we get in there I mean we'll to find out but once we get in there we'll we'll know what was done to the transmission and uh, what we need to correct that problem uh, I mean, I know that I get a lot of uh, these transmissions in from other shops, and I mean, the reality uh, is that I mean, there's a lot of shops that they don't work on uh, European vehicles. I mean, they think that there's something different than a regular domestic vehicle, and I mean, it takes a little, it's, it's, it takes a learning curve, you know, to get to know these vehicles. But it's it's just the same thing as a 4L60. I mean, all you got to do is just uh, understand the concept, you know, how they work. You know what does it take for them to shift and sometimes you have to understand the way it is shifted uh, as you see here this is completely electronic and uh, it does have a tiptronic switch inside the vehicle that you saw you know in the beginning of the video that's very important uh, that needs to be installed so it needs the, that tiptronic switch uh, in order for it to also function properly because after we fix the valve body and after we fix the problem with the transmission it's going to throw a Tiptronic switch code and the transmission might not be able to be uh, relearned. Uh, you know, I have some uh, vehicles, some instances that, I mean, you have to install the Tiptronic switch when you have a code like that because uh, you will still have some uh, issues, not bind ups or flares or anything like that, but you will still have some uh, very minor issues with, uh, with, the, with the way that the transmission behaves, uh, with the way that the transmission shifts. Uh, so you, that needs to be corrected as well. I mean, it, everything uh, actually uh, it acts as one whole, uh, you know, system. 
any problem with the drivability issues on the engine will cause the transmission not to function properly. Okay, well with that being said, I mean, uh, I hope you like this video and I hope we get that transmission in uh, so we can take a look at it and uh, tear down and, uh, you know, finish the repair. That might be part two of this video. All right, guys, I'm Hiram. Thank you for, for watching and uh, like, subscribe, and share this video uh, on your social networks. All right, guys, thanks for watching.